Nancy Cordes is here with us from our Washington Bureau. Nancy, did anyone envision that addiction would actually become such a prominent storyline in the 2016 race? You know, I don't think uh, that they did. Even the candidates were surprised that when they started holding town halls, uh, particularly in New Hampshire, but other places too, that people kept wanting to talk to them uh, about the epidemic of drug use and drug abuse in this country. Uh, you know, in New Hampshire, they've had a big problem, particularly in the northern part of the state, with heroin abuse, uh, with the overprescription of pain medication, uh, and, and they're desperate there for some kind of solution. And so uh, Hillary Clinton for example, said, you know, I really didn't expect this to be a big part of my platform, but now it is. I want to put $10 billion towards uh, helping people uh, overcome their drug addictions. And you've got this agreement, interestingly, on the right and the left uh, that something needs to be done. So when you've got a lot of passion behind the issue and when you've got both sides agreeing uh, that drug addiction needs to start being treated more like an illness and less like a crime, it raises the possibility that something will get done about it. Yeah, interesting political dynamic on this issue. Um, but taking a step back a moment, you know, Chris Christie has been getting a lot of attention in New Hampshire, but looking at his latest poll numbers, you know, there's some concern that he might not make the main stage at ne next week's debate. So how serious is this for his campaign? Well, the challenge for Chris Christie is that uh, his favorable ratings are starting to increase, uh, particularly in New Hampshire. Uh, latest polls showed uh, that he's now at about 51 percent favorability with Republican voters. That is a huge jump uh, from a couple of months ago when he basically had the highest unfavorables of any Republican candidate. Uh, conservative voters just felt that he wasn't conservative enough. But the problem for him is that that hasn't translated yet into votes. Uh, Republicans are still backing Donald Trump. They're still backing Ben Carson. They haven't switched to Chris Christie, and that's why he could be in jeopardy in this next debate. The question is, going forward, as people start to view him more favorably, do they eventually tire of, of Jeb Bush or of Donald Trump or someone else and say, OK, I'm swinging my support to Christie? Uh, we just don't know yet. All right. Nancy, in keeping with the debate, uh, where do things currently stand with the Republican debate negotiations? We know they were very upset about how the last debate unfolded and started making demands about what they expect from debates. What's going on there? Right. Well, it turns out that different candidates had different demands or different ideas about the way that things should be fixed. And so uh, while they all were essentially in agreement uh, that they wanted a more serious debate uh, and that they wanted to have more input in the process, uh, it, things kind of broke down over what exactly they wanted to see happen. So uh, you had this initial group of uh, three or four Republican candidates who were pushing for these negotiations with the networks. Uh, those three or four are still on board with this letter where they're going to outline of what they'd like to see happen. But the others are kind of negotiating ad hoc on their own uh, because they've got different issues, uh, different criteria of what they like to see happen. I think uh, there's no question that the next debate will probably focus uh, more on substance than the last one did um, because there was so much fallout over it. So, uh, you know, in the end, whether the, the candidates are all together or not, uh, they are going to see some dividends. Yeah, hard to get consensus when you have that many candidates. Right. Nancy Cordes in Washington, thank you. You're welcome.